Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Okay, so today I'm in Kinderdijk, uh, Holland. I am painting these incredible, iconic windmills, and I'm gonna be sipping on this, it's like a spiked seltzer, it's called Lavish. It's got absinthe in it, so I'm not quite sure how that's gonna turn out, but let's get painting, let's get sipping. So what I'm going to be using for materials today is a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. You can get it at any of your local craft stores or you can order it online. And you can certainly switch up the size, but that's the size I'm going to be using. Um, you, uh, we're working with acrylic paint today. The colors I'm using is titanium white, cobalt blue. This is burnt umber, Mars black, green oxide, burnt sienna, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up the colors, but that's what I will be using. I am going to be using a pencil to do my initial sketch. You can just use a number two or whatever uh, pencil you have lying around. For brushes, I'm using four brushes. I'm gonna use a number 24 flat brush. I'm also using a number four bristle brush, a number six round brush, and a number 10 flat brush. You will need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I'm also gonna be um, uploading a couple of pictures that you can download as your reference. One is gonna be a photograph of the landscape, and then the other one will be a picture of the painting that I create today. So you can download those and use them as your reference, and that's all we're gonna to need today. All right, so what I'm doing for the first step is I'm going to be doing an initial sketch. Um, I'm gonna be separating my sky from that little strip of land at the bottom of the windmills to the um, water. Uh, for, for you doing any painting outside, you can get fancy viewfinders, but what I like to do is just kind of use my fingers to figure out where I'm gonna be painting. I close one eye and I hold up my fingers in the size, a uh, similar size to my canvas, and I just kind of move them around and see where I wanna paint. And I've decided that I'm gonna paint um, I'm going to exclude the little building between the windmills. I'm going to be painting a portion of this front one as well as the other um, four that are behind it and the water. So what I'm going to do is I just have a little sliver of water down below. So I'm going to come up maybe two inches on my canvas and I'm going to make myself um, like a jaggedy line that's going to be um, come to about midway in my canvas, probably about here. And then I'm also going to do another little section for my land. And because I want it to look like it's really far away, I'm just doing a little sliver of a piece of land. It's not a, a very straight line. And this is just going to kind of almost come straight across, but not in a really straight line. And that's really all I'm going to do for my initial sketch. So you can, for, you can put your pencil down. I'm going to, for the next step, be using my big brush so you can get that out and ready to proceed. Okay, so what I'm doing for this step is I'm gonna be painting my sky. I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna obviously be using blue and white, but there's also a lot of clouds in the sky. Um, and as you get down towards the horizon, it's, uh, it's a little bit warmer. So what I'm, the colors I'm gonna be using are blue and white, and I'll also be using some of my brown and a little bit of my black as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just kind of get my um, a base coat for my sky on first. Oops, I just painted my, my easel. And then I will put my clouds on top of it. So I'm using a good amount of paint at this point so it will, um, I can spread it nice and easily. Um, and I'm also, I don't pre-mix my color, but what I'm doing is as I come down my canvas, I'm going to be picking up more white and that's going to allow my sky to get lighter and lighter as it comes down the canvas. Um, and you'll notice as I do this, I, I bring it back up into the previous section. That allows for a nice gradient as I go along. Um, and because I'm using a good amount of paint, I can really give these sweeping 
um, brush strokes that provide a nice smooth look to it. And then I'm gonna put my clouds on top of it. Um, sometimes it's really difficult to do the sky portion and the clouds at the same time. So this way, um, this is gonna provide you with a base and that which is your sky and then you can put the clouds on top of it. So right now I'm just kind of quickly getting this base on here and I'm not gonna get too, too fancy with the clouds, um, but I do want something that's gonna be reminiscent of the, the gray that we're kind of seeing in those clouds. And you can see my sky is getting lighter and lighter as it comes down towards that horizon line. I will use a touch of brown as I get nearing that horizon line just to add that. It's almost like a haziness at the bottom of the horizon. It's kind of where your, your clouds are disappearing a little bit um, and the atmosphere changes. So I'm just adding just a tiny touch of brown with my white mixture and this is gonna give me that warmth down at the bottom. I realize most of this bottom edge of the horizon is probably going to be covered with your with the windmills, but this just kind of gets it started for you. And now I'm going to add um, my clouds on here. I'm not switching brushes. I'm just going to touch my brush into the black and white. They're big and fluffy up at the top, so I just have uh, the black and white right now. And I'm just almost using these circular motions to, to get... Um, the idea that they've got this almost like fluff to them. They are pretty dark at the bottom. And as you go down towards the horizon line, they're gonna get smaller and um, less clear or have less clarity to them. So I will be using um, a smaller kind of brush stroke as I go down towards the bottom. Right now, I just picked up a little bit of white as well. Um, and again, you don't need them to be exactly as you see them out, out there. I will add a little bit of a highlight to them in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting um, some movement on the canvas to, to show you that there are little bits of clouds here and there. And again, most of these are gonna be covered up by your, your windmills, but this is just kind of giving you the illusion that there are some little, you know, fleeting clouds going by here and there. And again, I'm making them a little bit smaller as they go down towards that horizon line. Adding a little bit of white onto my brush now. Give it a little bit of fluffiness at the top of those clouds because it looks like we've got, um, the, the sun is obviously higher. So what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of add a little bit of brightness to the top of some of these. And again, I'm still just kind of using almost like a circular motion. You don't have to, again, make it photorealistic. This is just trying to give you the impression that we've got some big fluffy clouds rolling through. Um, I'm adding a couple of little highlights in through here just to give you the impression that they are what we're seeing. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because the, the star of the show really is those windmills. So I think at this point, I'm pretty happy. I've got some big ones up top. I've got these little ones kind of rolling down towards the bottom. Um, so at this point, I'm going to move on to the next step and I'm going to use this uh, big brush. So I'm going to just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna do is I'm painting my water. I'm using this large brush. Um, I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used in the sky, which I are gonna be the blue, white, gray, or black, and um, brown. It's really just almost like a grayish kind of color to me at this point. There's maybe a little clarity over by the edge so I'm going to use a little bit more blue and white over by this edge. And then I'm going to just use maybe a, a grayish kind of color towards the rest of it, which is brown, black, and white. I'm using a left to right kind of brush stroke. Um, and I don't want my edge where it hits the land to be really clean. So that's why I'm, I'm giving it almost like a jaggedy look. I do know that it goes way off into the distance, so I'm just gonna kinda 
get this color on here I am going to put a little bit of white on my brush in a second to lighten it up a little bit but I don't want this to be super smooth because to me it looks like it's a little ripply because the wind is kind of um, blowing it right now so this is going to I've got white that I'm putting on it right now and this I'm just kind of using this left to right so I've got um, that movement in it so a little bit more in through here and then I will be using this brush again for the next step so after you get this water and again it doesn't have to be really vibrant because I'm not seeing it as a super blue water out there I'm just seeing it almost like um, this grayish kind of tone so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and get ready for the next step okay so for the next step I'm putting my base coat on my land so my land is um, all the greenery area that's below the windmills and for my first coat I want it to be really dark because I want to add dimension to it um, on my second pass I will add like all the grass and maybe some bushes and stuff so this first coat I'm just going to be using black brown and green I'm using this big brush the big flat brush so black brown and green and I'm really just going to almost dot it in here so that way it's going to have um, some varying shades of darkness of greens and browns and this is going to act as a nice um, base coat when I go to add all of the grass on there later so again I'm just taking this brush and really just kind of dotting it on here um, after I put the windmills on I'm going to have um, some little grass coming in front of the of the windmills which is going to be um, on top of this dark base that I'm doing and again I'm just using green brown and black I don't pre-mix the colors I put them all on my brush at the same time but be careful because the black can take over um, so if you're finding it's too dark and it's just black 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 then what you want to do is wash and dry your brush and or just wipe it on your paper towel I'm giving it a rough edge at the top and when I meet the water I'm going to go back to that left and right um, brush stroke because I don't want it to um, look too too rough when it hits the land but I do want it to be um, make it look like it meets that area so right now I'm just kind of using a little left to right almost like skirting kind of motion I'm using the corner of my brush um, to get it to intermingle nice with the water area almost like the shoreline and then we are going to actually be using the pencil for the next step so once you get this first layer of the land on you can put this big brush away in your water cup and then just take out your pencil for the next step okay so what I'm doing for the next step is I'm going to be doing a sketch of the um, the windmills just the base uh, structure of them I'm not doing the full first one here I'm just doing a portion of it um, and the trick here is you want them to be shorter and skinnier as they go back so you could sit and kind of lay them out which I have you know kind of pre-planned it in my head here so I'm gonna be starting my first one I'm gonna do the dome part in a minute but I just kind of want to get this base part of the the top here and I'm not doing again this uh, to be photorealistic I'm really just kind of wanting this to be the impression of these so I'm just kind of giving it a basic shape um, as I come down in through here I know that it scoops out a little bit at the bottom and then there's going to be this area at the bottom where it's another part of the structure so that's all I'm going to do for the uh, base on that one my next one is going to be almost halfway uh, through my canvas I am going to do the full structure here um, so I need both of my sides to kind of be equal in 
in, in height. And I want to use it in ratio to what I see on the big building. So for me, that second one comes about almost halfway up this first building from where I'm standing. So that's what I want to make sure I have it in the correct um, height. It's got some funky little dome thing at the top. So I'm just going to kind of sketch in um, a quick representation of it. And then I'm going to go on to the next one. And this next one comes up, you know, similarly about halfway up for the um, main structure. And then I've got my little dome part. Look, I feel like I'm making mine a little bit too wide, but that's all right. I'm just kind of freehanding this out in the open. So if it doesn't turn out perfect, I'm okay with that. And then I've got a couple more that are going to be kind of hidden. Um, so these really don't need much detail at all. I'm just making these kind of cute little tiny ones. And then that's all I'm going to do for my sketch. So when you're done with this, you can put your pencil away and I'm going to take out that flat number 10 brush um, for the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm painting in the base coat of the um, five windmills. The um, I really don't want it to be too detailed um, in, in what I'm doing, but I do want there to be some kind of dimension. So the colors I'm going to be using are black and white and brown, and I'm also going to use a little of the burnt sienna. So how I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to do all of my rooftops um, with the same color palette. So I'm just going to use black, brown, and white for these little rooftops. I'm not really going to be um, doing any detail on them right now. Um, I will add a little detail later if I want to. Um, what you could do is you could get that, if you want to get the right side a little bit lighter. Um, that way it'll show that the sunlight is over on the right hand side. Um, but you don't really need to do too much in the detail right now. Just make sure that you paint it as high as your pencil mark. So make sure you cover those pencil marks. You don't want those to be showing later. And again, if you don't get the shape perfect, no worries. Nobody's going to be um, analyzing whether or not you got those angles perfect or not. And I'm going to do each one of those the same. So black, brown, and white. And you just want to color it in. Don't worry about it being too too fancy these flat brushes help to give you nice clean lines which is why um, I have chosen to use it and then if you can get it a little bit lighter over on that right hand side great if not no worries um, and again just kind of getting that colored in I'll get these two little ones done or these three and again as you get towards these smaller ones the detail is less important because you're going to be focused on that big one for viewing purposes. And if you need to switch your brushes and use a smaller brush, go for it. But I'm just kind of muscling through this little br or with, with my smaller brush. And then I'm going to tackle the main structure. And for me, that's going to be more brown than the top. So I'm going to be utilizing more of the brown and the white. And I'm also going to have a, um, this is where I'm going to add that dimension. So what I'm going to do is somewhere probably about halfway through all of them I'm going to put a line and I'm going to have the left side darker so for me I'm making choosing the left side to be darker because that's what I'm seeing out there so I'm still using black brown and white but I'm just varying my shades a little bit so black brown and white I've made this left side a little bit darker I don't necessarily want it to go fully black so if you feel like it's getting a little bit too dark, uh, you can clearly add a little bit more of the um, brown and white into your mixture. And then on the right side, I'm going to be using even more white. And that's what's a simple way to add dimension to it um, without having to go too much into detail. Just pick a, a spot on it, make a line coming down. You can kick it out a little bit just to show um, the the shape of the building and then you just want that right side to be a little bit lighter and this is how I'm going to tackle all the others I'm going to do a little bit darker on the left I'll pick like a center line to um, 
to show the, the separating point of that particular mark. There is actually another um, section. So you could, if you've got more time at home and you're analyzing that photograph a bit more, you'll notice that there is, there you could put in essence another um, another section and if you just make it lighter or darker than the first one that will show um, the separation but again for this quick tutorial purpose I'm just gonna do these two sections um, maybe three <laughs> it's tough there you go I keep seeing it and so you I just added a simple line down there all right so I'm gonna do the same thing over here black brown and white I'm gonna do this left side darker and the right side lighter. I'm going to pick the spot where I want the separation to happen and it looks like it's almost pretty center from where I see it out in the distance and you can bring this color right down to the um, to the land area. You want to bring it all the way up to that rooftop. We are going to have a little um, detail line that will separate the roof from the um, building itself. We'll do that later. But right now I am just kind of getting the base color on here. Again, it is white, black, and brown. And I feel like I want a little bit more brown just to emulate the this one over here. The wind is kicking up. I'm hoping it's not going to start raining here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same step for the other two. I've got the light color on my brush right now, so I'm going to just utilize it. My little windmills are a bit more healthy in stature than the ones out in the, out in the distance, but that's all right. Maybe mine had some extra Dutch pancakes for breakfast. And I'm going to do this left side a little bit darker. And again, if you needed to switch your brush and go with a smaller brush, feel free to do so. Um, getting this left side to be a little bit darker. And then for the next step, once you get these on here, you're going to want to give them a minute to dry. Um, for the next step, I'm going to be using that bristle brush the little bristle brush that I had you get. Um, so once you're all set with this step, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your bristle brush and get ready for the next step. Oops, so I forgot to color in this section of my uh, building, so I'm gonna go back to that flat brush, sorry about that. It's gonna be the burnt um, sienna brown, black and white. I need a base coat on it and I totally forgot about it. So here I go, I'm just coloring it in. I'm using a little bit of that um, burnt sienna because it looks a little bit more um, of a rusty color out there. I do want to get it all the way up to the top here. And I'm also going to use um, a touch of black to give myself a little shadow underneath. and then you can just pull this down. Again, it doesn't have to be um, photorealistic. I'm just kind of giving it the impression that it is something similar to, to that out there. And now you can really get ready for the next step with the bristle brush. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish up the um, greenery or the land area. Um, it, this is really fun because I've got these tall grass pieces um, that are in front of this first one and then there's all kinds of like bushes and grass and trees and stuff um, lining the shore. So I'm just really going to have fun here. I am going to use every color on my palette except for blue. Uh, I'm going to start back here and I'm just going to kind of work my way forward. Um, I do see that there's some trees and stuff back um, in the background. The trick here is you really want to get some lightness to the tops of some of the trees. That's going to help you to separate one from the other. Um, and you can't avoid the dark areas because those are going to help you see one um, tree from the next. 
So really I'm using this small brush and I'm going to start dotting some, some trees and some bushes. And I'm not gonna, again, do it exactly as I see it out there because I, I am just improving this. I don't need it to be um, super perfect. But as I get towards um, the short or towards the larger area, that's when you're gonna see I'm gonna use a little bit more detail. I'll use a little bit more vibrant colors. Um, I'll incorporate white a little bit more so it will, you'll be able to see more. Um, I do see that there's like some rusty kind of almost flowery stuff at the top of some of those. So I'm just gonna kind of incorporate a little bit of that rust and white. It's gonna give it like maybe some little pink hues that I'm seeing off in the distance. And you can see I am not um, including any of the other little buildings. I'm really utilizing this a lot so I can cover the bottoms of um, the building of the windmills. Um, I've got some little trees popping up over here. And again, you can go to town and have a whole bunch of details in here, but I'm just kind of having fun and um, making it look like there's a lot of life out there. Uh, you can study the photo that I've given you and really make it vibrant and have lots of life in it but I'm just kind of going with what I see and now all of a sudden now that I'm getting towards this one the details are coming into clarity a little bit and there's there's a lot of this grassy stuff that's coming from the um, from the shoreline so I'm gonna start to push my brush up almost like scraping it up and then I will start to play with the colors a little bit so this is giving you the information, the direction of these grass, pieces of grass that are coming up. You have that nice dark base underneath that's gonna provide a great background for these. Um, and I'm gonna bring it to hide, you know, the, the bottoms where the building meets the, um, meets the windmill. So this way it will help you to, um, hide, not necessarily just hide things, but it, helps to make it so you have a good transition from one spot to the next. And again, I'm just kind of going up and down to get this, um, the grassy stuff in motion. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start playing with colors. So I'm using yellow, green, and white at the tops of these little pieces. They're almost like little wheat grass things to me. Um, so I'm really just playing with the color and I'm dotting right now. Uh, I think I want to use a little bit of that rust color too. This is going to add, I see like this fluffiness on the top of these ones. So this is just giving me the illusion of the, that little fluffy, I don't know what, like little wispy things at the top of these pieces of grass. And I'm going to do that all the way over here. Yeah. And you know, you could, like I'm doing mine pretty vibrant. Um, almost like those are flowers at the top, even though I know that they're not. Uh, but you could, you could even put pink, you could put red, you could really um, bring this into, you could make these tulips, seeing as we're in Holland. Um, but I'm gonna just kind of add a couple more down by the shoreline. There's also, um, I don't know if you can detect this from, from the video, but there's a lightness as these little um, things hit the, hit the shoreline. Um, these pieces of grass. So I'm just kind of incorporating a little bit more lightness just to give it again that almost realistic but not totally 100% photorealistic look to it. But I do see that that is happening so I want to make sure that it has a little bit of translation down there. And then we're gonna switch brushes to that, to your small round brush after you get done this step. So once you feel like you've got enough little details on these background trees, you can, this is where I have, it, I have a hard time stopping. Um, once you feel like you've got enough here, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your small round brush and get ready for the next step.
Okay, so what I'm doing for the next step, I'm using my small round brush. Um, there are these little yellow details that are on the buildings. There's like a stripe between the roof and the um, windmill, the main structure itself. And then there's a couple of little yellow windows. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to kind of warm up my yellow a little bit. So I have this chrome yellow. I'm gonna use yellow, burnt sienna, and a little bit of white. And I'm gonna make myself more of like an oak, like a yellow ochre kind of color. Um, Cause that's more representational of what I'm seeing out there. I just add in a little bit of white. I'm just kind of mixing this on the fly here. And then what I'm gonna do, again, I'm not going totally into photorealistic detail. I just wanna give myself um, this separation in through here. And this also helps to clean up any line that I may have or any space that I had in between the, um, the building and the rooftop and now there's a couple of windows in through here so I'll put a little black detail on them in a in a little while but right now I'm just gonna get the shape of the window in there so I've got one there maybe one here and I'm not putting them exactly perfect perfectly um, placed like they are there I'm just having some fun there's a little door underneath here too that's got some of this yellow on it um, there's, I'm going to carry this line over into the other ones. And you might want to do two layers, um, depends on how well your, your paint covers for you. I've got another one in through here. And I don't know if you can detect this or not, but when I do small details, I always brace myself, brace my hand, because I have a little shaky hand. So when I go to do these small details, I always have my pinky or my side of my hand or my palm or something on the um, on the canvas and if you want to incorporate a couple of windows there's one up here you could improvise if you like this yellow you could you know put it a little fly just landed on me put it wherever you want to um, and then I am going to use this same brush for the next for the next step but I'm going to wash it and dry it so once you get this these yellow details just wash and dry that small round brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm gonna actually be doing the windmill part itself. Um, I'm using my small brush. I'll be using black and white, mostly black, um, especially to start it. And, and I'll prob I'm gonna use a little rust too because there's a little kind of fun detail on there. Um, but what I'm gonna suggest you do is a, take your black and add a little bit of water to it. This is gonna make it like an ink consistency and it's gonna help you to make co like a fluid line. Um, you don't have to water it down too, too much, but definitely adding a little bit of water into it is going to help you with making that line. You could, I suppose, sketch it out, but I'm just gonna kind of go for it. Um, my trick here is I'm going to start where where I think it starts um, on the building. I'm going to make myself a dot and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I know that I want this to go really high up my canvas so I'm going to make a dot a subsequent dot and then what I'll do is I've got to kind of make the next one in similar size so I can use my brush as a measuring tool and come down here but I can see that the bottom, because it's closer to me, looks a little bit longer. So I'm actually going to just kind of keep this in a, in a straight line. <laughs> Go like this and bring it down towards the bottom. And now I'm just going to kind of connect my dots. So this is where you're going to want that watered down paint. Keep your eye on the prize, which is the next dot, um, and just kind of go for it. So here I go. I'm going to start up here. I've got my eye on the prize, which is my next dot. And I'm just gonna kind of go down there. You can clearly, you know, go back again and do a second coat. And you can see my paint is a little bit dry as I get towards the bottom, but that's okay. I can always come back and add more 
And now I'm just going to kind of go right into that next one, right towards that next dot. And now I can go back and I can make it smoother if I want to with a second coat. And you can keep fiddling with this once you, once you get it on there. Um, you can take as long as you want to fiddle and get it nice and, and crisp and clean. Um, I'm going to just kind of go for this second one, make it a little bit wider because it looks a little bit wider out there to me. The wind is picking up a little bit here. And then I got to do my side ones and that's where the, per the perspective is going to come into play. Um, because the side ones, one's coming at me and one's going away from me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look where is, where does it end in relation to my windmill? So this, the um, propeller, I guess is what it's called, is going to end around this line straight up. So that's what I'm going to do. It starts up here and it's going to end at my intersecting point which is the um, the center dot and it looks like it's getting a little bit wider as it comes towards me for perspective purposes so I'm making it a little bit wider and obviously I, I've, I've got to add a little bit wa more water to my paint so it can be a little bit more fluid And this propeller is more flat towards me because I, I'm looking at it at a different angle, so it looks wider. And then the next one has got to come kind of straight from that one. Um, so I'm going, and it comes just a little bit to the right of this bottom. So I'm going to go a little bit to the right and come up, and that's where I'm going to put it to. Keep myself in a straight line ish. Ish is always very important when you're sipping and painting. <laughs> you just got to be okay with whatever happens, happens. And once you've got this on here, it's kind of straightening it out a little bit. Okay. So that's going to be that portion. Now I'm going to go and do the other ones. And again, I'm just really watching where they are in relation to the um, to the windmill that's next to it. So that's my center dot. This goes straight, the center one goes straight up and it looks like it's kind of in line with this. So that's how high I'm gonna go. And to me, it's going pretty straight up. So I just made a dot. I'm gonna go straight down. That's probably a little wider than it should have been, but that's okay. And then the bottom one is just going to disappear right into the grass. So I'm just going to kind of go straight down into the grass. The left one is going to come past here. It's at a little bit of an angle. So I like to make my, my markings so that way um, I don't lose myself and I can just kind of connect my dots. That's, that's the easiest way for me you may find a, a more efficient or effective way for you, um, but this is the way that works best for me. So that's one. And then the next one comes about halfway over the top of this building. So I can make my dot right about there and connect these two dots. So again, it's really all in where is it in relation to something else. Um, I'm electing to um, kind of eliminate some of the other details here, but if you want to incorporate all the tiny little details that you see, I'm cool with that. That's your painting. You, you make that decision all on your own. So this, as they get to these smaller ones, I'm you, you know, you may choose to continue to make little dots. You might just kind of go for it, whatever kind of works for you. That one was a little clunky, but that's okay. I can't even really see the side ones on this one. So I'm just going to kind of pretend like I can. We'll just make it like that and like that. 
and huh, the other one seems to be on this side. So right now I'm just kind of winging it because I'm finding some of them are hard to see here. So we're just kind of having fun. This last one, it's really hidden behind a tree, so I'm just going to kind of get those top propellers in there. Oh, I think I've lost myself. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. I don't know if you saw what I just did, but I put propellers on both sides of this windmill here. <laughs> so that one's going to be a fancy windmill. We'll see if anybody ever notices that. Okay, one, two. All right, so I've got a fancy windmill that has propellers on both sides of the building. Whoops. Um, and then I have the rest. So what I'm going to do, I said I was going to use some white too. So this is just going to add a little bit of a highlight onto these. Um, you may want to do the, the grid that you see. Um, I think I'm going to kind of improv a really basic not perfect kind of um, grid that's coming down from the ones that we can, the propellers that we can see close to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a couple of lines that are in the same direction as the propeller itself. I'm choosing to do a gray. You could um, use another color if you want, but the gray to me, I think I need it a little bit darker. Um, the gray is, is going to allow me to um, make it so they're, they're not too bold. If I make larger than I want lines, the gray will help me to kind of um, disguise that a little bit. And then I've got this one coming down in through here. And then again, I'm just kind of going quickly with this. You could, you could spend a whole bunch of time um, making this really, really perfect if you wanted to, but for me, I'm just kind of improving it. Um, I've got one more in through here, and then I'm going to do these in through here. And again, your decision on the detail is totally up to you. If you want it to be really detailed in nature, feel free to kind of um, put as much detail as you want. I can only see a little tiny bit of this top one up here. So I'm just kind of doing what I see. And then this one I've got, I like this little detail on here. I, I know that it's, um, it might take you a minute, but I think this is kind of all I'm gonna do on this. So when you're all done with this step, we are going to be using this small brush again so you can put, you can just kind of wash it and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what I'm doing for this step, I'm using that small brush again. I am going to be doing my little final details on the buildings themselves. So I will be using like black and white. Um, I think that's it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So. I've got these lines on top of my windows. This is going to give you a little bit of dimension in the windows. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of shadow down this right side. There's maybe a little bit more shadow underneath here. I've got some shadow underneath here. So really right now I'm just using black so I can get a little bit more dimension on here. I'm not adding, um, well, I might add that little window up top. This is just black. Maybe just cause, cause there's something up there. Um, if you needed to clean up anything, you could take this time to do that as well. I'm gonna, there's a little window in here. It's not just uh, yellow and white. So I just added, um, black and white or gray to my brush right now and I'm putting a little black and white like rectangle in here and then I'm going to take white and add just a little grid inside this window just to give you that little extra detail on it um, and if you and if you wanted to do oh it looks like there's a green door here too 
so a little green door. You could do, um, let's see what else. We've got the, uh, the windmill itself has a little box here. We'll put a little box here, 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 here. Um, there seems to be these white little stripes. And again, you can have fun and make this really um, exceptionally detailed or you can just kind of have fun and just add these details as you, as you see fit. If you wanted a shadow on the building of, that, uh, of the windmill itself, you, I just added black and white. As long as it's darker than this, you could just add almost like the illusion of the, um, the grid mark. So that gives you the idea that there is a shadow on the building. You could also use it to clean up the, um, clean up your edges if you needed to. And then, let's see, what else do I wanna do? I want to put a little rust dot in the center of these. It looks like there's a little rust. And you can see right now, I'm just adding these fun little details. Um, you, could, you could make it really quite um, detail oriented or you can just kind of have fun like I'm doing and I'm kind of improv some of this stuff. Um, I think I want another little shadow underneath here to add that special dimension to it. If you felt that you needed to add a little bit more highlight, you could do that as well. Um, but I'm kind of digging this, so I think I might call it. Hold on, let me just add a little inside to that window. Maybe a little more white here. But you can see I'm, I'm just having some fun now. Uh, but there is one tiny little step left to do. So after you um, get all these fun little details done, and which I just used, I think black, white, and the um, burnt sienna. Um, but again, you could use other colors if you wanted to. Uh, so once you get this done, you can wash and dry this small round brush and get ready for the final step. Okay, so, so, so the last step to any good painting or any painting for that matter is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm going to do this one in the bottom right corner. I do my initials, but you could do your first name. You could do the date. Uh, you could really do anything that makes you happy. Um, and let me just kind of get this on here. I just added a little bit of water to my brush so I have a smoother signature there. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting with you again sometime. Thanks for joining me in Amsterdam, Holland. Or actually, I was just a little outside of Amsterdam for this particular painting. Amsterdam is a very fun, vibrant, and enticing city, and it's a great place to do a paint and sip. There are many sipping options and plenty of spots for you to set up your easel and paint all the beauty that this place has to offer, such as the charming buildings, the alluring streets and canals, the gorgeous wisteria trees, and of course, the lovely tulips, but they're only around in the springtime. Today, however, I chose to get out of the city and check out the country's landscape, and that's when I found these amazing windmills, which are really an iconic symbol and national treasure of Holland. So I really hope you enjoy this painting today, and if you have any questions about painting and sipping in or around Amsterdam, feel free to leave me a comment below, and don't forget to join me as I paint and sip around the world.